So last week in our first lesson in the series about leaving the past behind, we, we noted in Ephesians 4 that the Apostle Paul says, we have problems, and those problems begin in the mind. It begins in our way of thinking. Our thinking is futile and darkened, and it causes us to see life in a way that we're not supposed to see it. And therefore, God is trying to show us that problem. And I think it's important that we, we grasp that. That, that is such a, a, a critical foundation that our thinking based on the world and based on values and systems and, and, and upbringing and culture is not God's way of thinking. And, and I think that is so important because sometimes we become so captured by our sins and as somebody who tries to come to us and help us to go in the right way, we, we stay stuck in our thinking and we say, well, I'm right. I've seen things properly. And they can't hear the truth of what God is trying to say. That's such the beginning point of the problems and really where, where Paul flows all of this text and talking about the problems that we have and trying to leave the past behind and put to death the old self. Admitting that our thinking is broken and that we cannot see clearly is the, the starting point. And now as we are in Ephesians 4, in particular we're going to look at verses 22 through 24. The title of this lesson is You Need to Change Your Clothes. Because that is really the, the picture that the Apostle Paul now gives. After starting with the mind, he's now going to talk about a, an image. He's going to use a picture here of the need to take off the, the former way of life. But the illustration he uses is that of clothing. Take off this old clothing and put on new clothing. As you see in verse 22 of Ephesians 4, you were taught to put away your former way of life, your old self corrupted and deluded by its lust. This, this word here of the modern translation say putting aside or putting off. It's the same word that's frequently used in the scriptures of, of, of taking garments off. In fact, in, in Acts chapter 7 and verse 58 where it talks about how uh, those who had laid their, their cloaks and their, and their coats aside to stone Stephen, the putting off of the clothes. It's the same word here that, that the apostle Paul is using. It's giving us an image here that there is a need to set aside this former way of life, like, like putting off these old clothes. You need to, to set them aside. And I think that as soon as you hear words like that, the, the question that should probably immediately arise within us is, well, what's wrong with my old self? Why can't I just keep doing what I was doing? What's, what's wrong with those clothes? What's wrong with that former way of life? What's, what's wrong with living in those ways? And I want you to notice the rest of verse 22 of the Apostle Paul said there. Because he said, you need to put away the old self, put off those old clothes, because they're corrupted by deceitful desires. He says they're, 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 they're broken, corrupted, they're messed up, by deceitful desires. Our deceitful desires have colored the way that we look at life. And I want us to think about that word even. Deceitful desires. How are your desires lying to you? <laughs> it's not an interesting thing to say. That you have been, your thinking and your way of life needs to be put aside because it's corrupted by deceitful desires. Well, how are my desires deceitful? How are they lying to us? What are they telling us that's false? I think there's a few things to consider in how our desires lie to us. One of the things that our desires do is they like to tell us the past was so much better. The way you lived your life before, that was so good. It was just so enjoyable. It was so pleasurable. It was so great. We have an interesting mechanism of, of having the past always be better than the present. It always was so much better back then. We just had no problems and no issues. And, you know, we floated on clouds and it was rainbows and unicorns. And now nothing was ever bad back then and now it's so terrible. And that just seems to be the human condition. I mean, you think about how is it possible for the people of Israel just a few days into the wilderness wanting to stone Moses and go back to Egypt and say it was so much better back then. 
We just have the tendency to do that. Our, our desires tell us, oh, it was so good when we lived in that former life. And not only does it lie to us about our past, but our desires also lie to us telling us that you are going to be happy in this lifestyle. You're going to be happy in those sins. You're going to be happy living your life the way that you are. If you just obeyed those desires, if you caved into those sins, if you just did what you wanted, you would be satisfied. I mean, please think about that. Isn't that not why we sin? It is ultimately the desire is telling us, this is going to be pleasurable, this is going to make us happy, this will make us comfortable, this will make us satisfied. And what Paul is trying to do is tell us, those desires are lying to us. They are deceitful desires. They're, they're not helping us. They're not going to work for us. It's not going to bring the happiness and the satisfaction that you want. And however long you've lived your life, just think about the sins of the past and tell me how much satisfaction you have today from those past decisions. How much can you carry forward and say, today I am so satisfied because of all of those sinful decisions of the past? You see, in the present, the desire lies us that this is going to be it. And so we go to that path, we go toward that sin, and then we realize, well, it didn't provide what I want. And that's the image that's being given to us. And ultimately, I think it is interesting that as much as we know, that sin is not going to give us this lasting satisfaction, this overwhelming joy. It's not going to provide what we think it's going to provide. We struggle with putting that old self away. We struggle with putting off those old clothes. And I want you to think about why in kind of an illustration. I think it's interesting that the Apostle Paul uses that the picture of putting off old clothes and putting on new clothes. I might be all by myself on this, but I'm going to take a venture that there's some of you in the audience who are like me who have these really old clothes that you just refuse to get rid of. They're, you know where they are, and every once in a while you pull them out. You probably never wear them in public, but you have these old Faded, hole filled, ratty clothes that your spouse tries to throw away every year. Why do we have those? Why do we keep those? Now, usually there's one of two reasons they're either comfortable or they're memorable, or both. They're comfortable, there's just something about them that's comfortable. Or they mark a memorable moment that it just gives you that kind of ah. Uh, and I want us to realize that that is ultimately what the struggle is with this picture that Paul is giving us about putting off this old self. Why is it so hard for us to put away that old life, get rid of the former lifestyle, throw away those old clothes spiritually? And I think it's because of these two things. It's the same image. Because we're reminded about that comfortable life. Just the way we lived. It just feels right. It just feels comfortable. And it may just be memorable. It's just, just what I've always done. And it seems to be the right thing to do. And I want us just to kind of get a sense of that. That there is just this familiarity to the old lifestyle. And we know that it is wrong and yet it pulls at us. It is difficult for us to break free from that former way of life, those former decisions, that kind of lifestyle. And that's why we go back to them, even in our clothes. You buy new clothes, they're stiff, they're rigid, they're not broken in, they're uncomfortable. That's the way the new life and the new clothes feel like. If you try to live for God, you know, this just doesn't feel right. The, the old life feels right. That feels comfortable. That's what I remember. That's what, what seems to be the right way to go. And what I want us to see is, if you listen to verse 22, what the Apostle Paul says is, your desires are lying to you. 
Those old clothes are lying to you. They didn't provide the thing that you thought they would provide. They didn't give you the help. They didn't give you the satisfaction. And the picture that he just simply wants us to start with, if we're going to put the past behind and walk forward in having hope, is that we realize that that is not giving us what we think it's going to give us. It's just not what it is. It's not that good. It doesn't provide. It doesn't satisfy. It doesn't help. And the longer that we hold on to these things as being comfortable and memorable in our minds and are unwilling to toss them aside, the longer we will go back to that former life. We will just rush back to those old clothes. That's the image that he wants us to see is that putting off this old self is not about just simply making a few changes in your life, a few behavior changes, things like that. It means taking those old clothes, that former way of life, and completely discarding them. No leaving them in the drawers to access later. You've you got to get rid of them. Just completely ditch them. That's what he wants us to put them aside, throw them away. You know it doesn't satisfy. You know it doesn't give what you think it gives, so get rid of them. So that means for us, we're not going to think the way that we used to think about life, about how our culture tells us to think, or what friends tell us to think, what family tells us to think. We understand there's a whole new way of thinking, and we're casting aside that old life. And that's what leads into what he says in verse 23. This verse 23 is particularly important, and an important observation. He says there in verse 23, and be renewed in the spirit of your minds. This reaches back to the prior verses where he says, our problems have come from our corrupted, dark, and futile thinking. And so there needs to be a change of attitude, the change of way we think, which I want you to consider this, because so often when we talk about trying to get rid of the former life and move toward Christ and put on these new clothes, we skip this really important middle step. We talk about when to get rid of the old life and go right to the new, but notice that's not what the Apostle Paul said yet. He says to put off that old self and then you need to change the way you think. And then you're going to put on the new clothes in verse 24. And the reason why that's so important is if we don't change our way of thinking about life and about the old self and about those old clothes, what are we going to do? Go right back to the old clothes. As long as I think the same about that old life and I believe the desires that are corrupted within me, that are lying to me and telling me, that's the way to live. It's going to be so good. It's, it's, it's going to be pleasurable. It's going to be joy. It's going to be everything you're looking for. As long as we keep thinking that, we're going to go back to it. I always relate things like to diets. As long as I think a Snickers is good, I'm just going to keep going with Snickers. I mean, it just, it's, it's, you've got to change your way of thinking. There's no diet succeeds until you change the thought process. The same thing that's happening here is that we are not going to change anything about having this new life. <clears throat> Breaking free from this old life, former way of living, until there is a change of thinking. I hope one thing that you would consider in this is that that would be a constant process. I would like the image for you to be simply this. As we put in this new way of thinking, what we are ultimately doing is like we are installing a filter now. And now my filter is this. Anything that people say, anything that I've been taught, whatever the world says, the culture says, Friends say, family say, whatever they say, whatever they tell me is good and right or make me happy or whatever it is, I'm going to run that through the filter of Christ. That's what the changing of thinking is about. Is I'm not just going to accept what people tell me, no, this is going to make you happy. New and improved time. It's all you better need it. That's what the world just always comes up. This is going to be the thing to change your life. This is going to be the thing that you need. If you just had this, or changed this, or did this, now you would be satisfied. 
Now we've got to run that through the Christ filter. And realize, really? I really got to be happy because I got a new phone, a new car, a new job, a new family, whatever it is that we throw in there. If I just made this one decision, if I just made this one change, it's just going to fix it all. We've got to run everything through this filter because the world today just tells us you will be happy, you will be satisfied if you just follow your heart, obey your desires, do what you want to do, listen to your own truth, follow that path, that will be the way that you want to go. And what God is trying to tell you is that's the old clothes. Following your heart and following your truth and following your feelings, that's the old clothes. That's the old clothes trying to tell you. Come on back to me and put these on. And think about it. When you follow your heart and follow your feelings and do what you want, doesn't that feel comfortable? That's the whole problem. Yeah, it feels comfortable. It's the way we've always lived. That's the old clothes. That's the old life. Here's the Apostle Paul coming and said, if you want to break free from this past, if you want to break free from this, this slavery to sin and really have a new life, You've got to look at that old life with the right lens and the proper filter and see that there needs to be a new way of thinking. We cannot listen to our heart or to our culture that tells us this is the right way to live. This is going to be so right. Instead, we run everything through the filter of Christ. Is this really going to give me satisfaction? Is this really going to be the life change? Is this really going to be the joy, the comfort that I'm looking for? And that's what he presses in into verse 24, when he then says, now in verse 24, clothe yourselves with the new self created according to the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. It is only when we now adopt this new thinking, we have the filter installed of Christ, that we will be able to put on the new clothes and be able to properly wear them. Is that renewed thinking that's going to change our lives. Until the thinking about the old life changes, we will be stuck in that old life. We'll be stuck in that former way of living. And, uh, we have a, a humorous but appropriate saying that we always say. If you keep doing the same thing, expecting different results, you're crazy. <laughs> right? But what do we do? Oh, this form of way of life is really going to do it this time. This time the sin's going to do it. This time it's really going to make the change. See, we've got to have the new way of thinking to be able to move to the new clothes. We have to change what we do. If we are truly going to break free from sin and truly have the life that, that God wants us to have, it's the new thinking that can cause the radically different life in our lives. And I want us to see that the picture that he uses here about clothing is so appropriate. What is the first thing you do if you're going to go get new clothes? Try and want to look in the mirror, right? All right, how do these look? It's going to work. It's going to not work. All right. Is this going to be what I'm supposed to have? What I'm supposed to look like? Does it look good on me? I want you to notice the picture that the Apostle Paul gives me. Here's what you are supposed to look like. Did you catch it in verse 24? In verse 24, he says, you're going to clothe yourselves with this new self. And notice what it is. Created according to the likeness of God. In true righteousness and holiness. I hope you kind of catch the, the mind-blowing statement that's being made there. You're going to put on this new self, these new clothes, and what you're going to see is not the world, but the likeness of God. Created according to the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. And so the standard of thinking is not the world's way of thinking, but God's way of thinking. And the goal of this transformation, this process, as we are breaking free from the old self and moving to the new self, is that people are going to be able to see, and you are going to be able to see. 
a very different person. A person that's been created in the image of God. Just real quick, I want to give you a sense of how the New Testament is always trying to tell us. That's ultimately our mission. That's ultimately our purpose. What, what God is defined and ultimately is who we are. Colossians 3, verse 2. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. Uh, and don't, you know, you can stop there. And go, okay, so you know, stop doing bad stuff and do good stuff. But that's not the point. For you died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. What will people see when you have this new life? Christ. You move from that former life and change the way of thinking and allow God to transform you. There's going to be somebody new. Christ will now be observed. Your life is hidden in him. Or how about Romans 8, 29? For those he foreknew, he also predestined to be what? Conformed to the image of his son. Here is God changing us, putting on new clothes. Well, what are the new clothes going to do? But cause us to have the appearance and the likeness of these characteristics of God. That's what God is doing for us as he puts these new clothes on us and transforms us. Is trying to move us into this new life so that we would be in true righteousness and holiness. The old life has died. And this harkens all the way back to the very beginning of the scriptures. Where we read that Adam and Eve were made, created in the image of God. It's the whole purpose right there. Made in the image of God. Now we, we corrupt it. We break the image. We shatter it. We smash it to pieces. We completely battle it up. And what God is saying here is I want you to see that you broke it. It's that former life's a mess. Allow your mind to be changed. Have a new attitude, a new thought process. And as you allow that thought process to change your life, it's going to be a new you created in the image of God again. You're back to what God was wanting you to be in the first place. That's the transformation that's happening. And that is ultimately the motivation that I want to talk about as we begin to conclude this idea that the Apostle Paul gives to us here. I want you to notice that the Apostle Paul does not say, now here's why you need to put off the old self and put on the new self. Throw away those old clothes and put on the new clothes because one day God's going to judge you and the wrath of God is coming. And if you keep doing those things, you're going to get caught and you're making your life a mess. By the way, all true. Not his point, though. Once you notice, that's not the motivation. The motivation for walking with God is, oh, okay, just be afraid. Or, oh, no, it's all going to go bad. Or, oh, no, uh, he's going to judge us. Not the point. Here's the point. That old life is not who you are. That former way of life is not who you are. Or maybe to put it in the clothing image, those old clothes don't reflect you properly. It's been a historical saying, I had to Google this. How long has that saying been where Clothing makes the, makes the person, makes the man. Clothing makes the man. And there's a lot of truth to it. It reflects who you are. What you wear has a representation of the way you think. And it's interesting that here he's saying, those old clothes don't reflect who you are. That's why you don't want to put on the old clothes. That's why you don't want to have that former self. Don't go back to that life. Because God has made something far greater for you. God has something in mind for you. He has a purpose for you. He has a direction for you. He doesn't want you throwing your life away in that former way, which is corrupted by those lying desires, which is simply messing up your thinking so that you aren't able to find true joy and true satisfaction, leaving you empty in life. But unfortunately, what happens is when we sin, 
What we are doing is we are just listening to those deceitful desires. We're, we're, we're buying the lie. And we're not living up to the purpose that God has given us. There is something exciting to see. That God is not just simply coming to you and to me and saying, you know, I just want you to stop sinning and live for me. It's not that simple. What he's trying to say is that former way of life, it's wrecking you. It's messed up your life. It's corrupted. It's caused us to look at life wrong. It's caused us to look at God wrong. It's caused us to look at each other wrong and family wrong. It's broken our thinking. It is a way of thinking that does not satisfy. It doesn't bring you lasting joy. It's not accomplishing what you think it's going to accomplish. And as soon as you will accept that, I will give you new clothes. You change your way of thinking because I have a purpose for you. A purpose that is satisfying. It's created in the image of God. This is the kind of clothing I want to lay upon you and give you the life that truly will satisfy. That truly will give you life joy. It's not about just stop this and start this. It's a whole purpose that God is trying to give us. And in fact, I think that is perhaps more important right now in our culture than ever before. Are you not sick of the world trying to tell us who we are? I mean, this is what the culture is right now. The culture is based on your gender, your race, your ethnicity, your career, your wealth, your geography. This is who you are. I, the culture will just put this lens on you. This is who you are. This is the way you're supposed to be. I want you to listen to what God says. We're in Galatians chapter 3, verse 20 says, Many as you were baptized into Christ, that's the same imagery, you've clothed yourself with Christ. So what's the lens? There's no longer Jew and Greek. There's not slave and free. There's not male and female. Because you're all one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, you're Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. Here God is just shattering that lens and say, the world tries to define us by these shallow things. And unfortunately, we can have the tendency to buy into that and say, well, I am these things based on what the world tells me. And here is God coming along and saying, if you belong to Christ, here's the lens, here's the purpose, here is who you are. You're an heir to the promise of God. That's the lens to live by. That's what defines you. You belong to Christ. That's your lens. That's who you are. That will give you satisfaction in this life. Not what the world tries to lay on us, but what God is trying to lay on us. I hope that we would then think about we need new clothes. We need to throw away these old clothes that have been given to us. These old clothes have been given to us by our culture, by our world, by our parents, by our friends. We've got all kinds of things that get layered on us. God says, I want you to just put all that away. Take those things off. It's not who you are. And we would see that our old clothes are ultimately full of lies, full of emptiness, and full of pain. They just don't give us what we're looking for. And I know those old clothes are comfortable. That former way of life is memorable. But God has better clothes for you. God has clothes that give you hope, that give you help, and give you healing. What he's trying to give you is really what you need. And as long as we keep going back to the old clothes, we'll never have hope for the future. And we'll never find the healing that God is trying to give. Leave the past behind and move forward with a new purpose, a new 
new purpose that gives you hope. You're created in the image of God. God is transforming you so that you can be conformed to the image of the Son. So that you would live with that purpose. That's who you are. That's your identity. Your life hidden in Christ. Because only in that life is there meaning, is there hope, and is there hope. Let's go to God and pray. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you that you that you are so patient with us that we can do so much to absolutely destroy the image that you have made us in. We have uh, an amazing ability to to wreck our lives and destroy our lives, to hurt other people hurt ourselves, to listen to all the wrong influences, to believe all the wrong people, and to make such a mess of our lives, to enslave ourselves to our corrupt desires. And yet, God, you are amazing that you continue to come to us and continue to love us to such a degree that you encourage us to grow that those old clothes away. And that you continue to work in changing our way of thinking and changing our lives so that we could live to the purpose you give us. Lord, as we look about the world there, there's just none who are righteous, none who are doing what you want. Lord, thank you for how you continue to be patient with this world. God, we pray that we would have our minds renewed. That we would truly think differently about this life. Think differently about this world. Help us to have the filter of Christ placed within us so that we would see life clearly. That we would understand better what you desire of us. And we would see our sin more clearly. And Lord, give us the strength to reject our deceitful desires that, that lie to us every day, telling us this is the way to joy and happiness. Help us, Lord, to overcome that. And Lord, we pray for help to put these new clothes on, to see that we've been created with the glory of your Son, and we desire to live in that image. Lord, we pray that you help us walk in that path. And Lord, forgive us for the times that we haven't done so. Thank you for your patience to forgive us when we fail, when we fail so long. Lord, give us the strength to live in the image of your Son and according to this new purpose in Jesus' name. Amen. We are going to sing the invitation song, and our invitation is to come to the new clothes. God wants to give you your clothes. He wants to give you a new way of life, a new 